Tinakoto YouTube. You know, today we look at uh, making this lashing uh, again. So I did a basic instructional video on how to make this um, toki, uh, kuru, sort of roimata uh, teardrop lashing. Um, I've heard someone call it a ring bolt lashing before, but I think it's a little bit different today. I'm not sure what the actual name is. Um, so this is the one we're going to use today. Um, and it should end up looking like this one. And this is more like just a real time video, maybe some of how I'm going now and what it looks like actually making it. And um, any, any new techniques that I've uh, learned over the last little while since I made the first one. Um, I'm not sure how everyone does these, but this is, is how um, I carve the ponamu with these grooves up here. Make it nice and uh, small at the top, um, close at the top together there. The hole is big enough, hopefully, to fit through the bits of cord that we need. Um, so the first one is, I started using this 8 braid. Um, no core thing from Nautilus um, in Christchurch where I live and um, they make this for the necklace cord it's actually nice and soft and, and really easy to use um, just as strong as a three plat from the waxed braid cord it's a little bit tricky to get through because it does fluff up a little bit because it's not waxed so let's see if we can uh, get this through the hole I think often this part here can be the trickiest of the whole thing. You see? Ah, winner. Okay, so now I just need to pull this through so it's nice and even. Alright, awesome. Okay, now moving on to whipping. I'm going to show you this. This is something called I rigged up up here. So this is where I get my wax cord from. Just pull it off the off the spool like so. And voila. It's pretty cool. I'm pretty proud of that little uh, invention there. And let's see if we can reset the camera. Awesome. So I'll pull some of that down. Now for the whipping. Now this is this is a tricky one to work out um and see how it works with this cord so you have to have a look at my other video on whipping with some bigger cord and some color coded bits of how to work this out but this is kind of what it looks like and um, when you're making it so you make a big loop it doesn't have to be right on top because you'll be able to slide it down okay i've got my strands mixed up i'm going to start that loop again so I make a big loop And that's going to go around both of these ones, like so. One, two. I'm just going to pull that end in so you can see that at the end there will just snug up tight, not too hard. Three, four, five, six. Seven, so seven's about that long. We're going to round about seven's about right. I'll take eight on this one. There we go, see how long that one is. Okay, and then we've got to untangle the, uh, untangle the end. Let's see how that will come out. It's not playing nice today. Tricky part is you got to try and hold this together while you're untangling this with the other hand. All right, there we go. That's free. And this here's our leftover loop, and this here's the one that started it. So now you got to try and hold that end tight while we pull the rest of that loop through. I don't want it t super tight yet because it's not quite sitting in the right place. We need to carefully slide it down so it sits on top. Yeah, that's the one. Get the, get the finger cord in the grooves. Yeah. 
So that's come loose a bit at the top, which is fine. It just needs a bit of a... Keeps focusing on the background. There we go. Okay, so once that's in the right place and pulled down far enough, then we can make it tight. Okay. So I'm going to use my pliers to get a good grip. Right, so it's tight. Nice, now we can get rid of this top part, make sure it doesn't confuse us. Now the next step I always do is with this one, because you need the end um, um, cut off at the right time, you can't do it straight off the spool. As um, I do a quick measurement of how much I'll need. So I just do that by wrapping it around like this. Just about, about as down as far as I as I want it to go on the on the pendant. <clears throat> it's definitely always good to have uh, too much when you do chop it off, rather than not enough. Yeah, it's not enough. You go right back to the start and do the whipping again, which is a pain in the butt. All right, so it's covered up the hole now. I've held that up. Look at the proportions. Yeah, around about that long should be okay. So I'll take that and then I will take a whole bunch more and I'll chop it off up here. All right, so now we're good to go. So now I've got to unwind it. Now, unfortunately, that process can twist the uh, the cord up a little bit. So I'm just going to just out of the shot here because I need to drop it down, it's quite long. I'm just trying to un unwind that cord a little bit. Okay, there we go. Alright, our next step, which is another threading through part, is often the tri another tricky part. So we're going to take the end, and this is kind of what the, the part that I worked out that holds it all onto the Ponamu. And this needs to be threaded down through the hole as well. So let's see if my hole is big enough. Oh, maybe not. Yes. All right. So that comes all the way through. So, and then we come back up to our first knot around the top and cinch it down. Oops. There we go. Then from here, we just start doing our knots. Going opposite ways, one each way, to make a straight line of knots coming down the middle. Now you can make these into spirals, which go around and around, just by doing knots the same way each time, um, which is a pretty cool feature as well. One each way. You don't need to do these super hard. Um, they need to be firm, but not, uh, not ridiculously hard. And a really um, beautiful one I, I was making a couple of months ago. And I got right down to this stage of, uh, of completion. And I finished it all the way down to the, um, to the hole in the middle. And I was pulling one tight. And the whole top bit snapped off with the binding all attached. I was gutted. I had to start again from scratch with that one. Yeah, so just keep doing these uh these all the way down. How are we looking? Yeah, it's starting to come together.
I use these on um on these sort of style pendants, but on any pendant really that has a um there's room for this at the top. Um, use it on uh, Heimato fish hooks um, quite a bit, um, and do see that around. So that's another good place to use these. Okay, so once you've covered up the hole, you're getting close to how long you want it. Is that going to be us? I'll do a few more. When you're getting ready to the end, that's when you want to start working on the final, the final wraps and the technique to hide, hide the end. Which is the special magic of these these lashings. So I'm going to do that now. So to hide it, the first step is. We're going to do maybe at least four, maybe five more wraps, but they're going to be loose wraps, loose knots. Okay, that's it. One, two, three, four, still alternating, five, I might try six today, six, okay. So there's our loose knots, and here's the end of our, oh, that's a pretty good, uh, good estimation, but I mean, I chopped it off. Now, the tricky job here is to slide this all the way under all of these, so that when we tighten them up, it will be cinched under. Let's see if we can get it under. Come on. Let's see. Two more. <sighs> so this is often the trickiest, most fiddliest part of the lashing. Okay, so we've got that going under all of those now. Now our job is going to be tighten all of these up and then the end cord will be cinched up under, secured under it. So you got to try and figure out which one you need to pull. So looking at this one here, just going to pull that first part nice and tight. There you go, so that's one down. Two down, so now that in part is secured under there. Okay, now they do have a tendency to, to cross over during this, so you've got to make sure you don't don't tighten it up with them under each other. So you need untangling from time to time. Make sure you keep the line straight. Okay, where are we up to? Okay. This one. So that's three. Was it four? Oh, hold on. I've got a bit of a bump coming up here. We didn't quite get that smooth. There we go. Five. And six. There we go. So you can see that's tucked up under several of those layers. And then here's the extra loop, so we'll pull that loop through now. Now this can leave a little bit of a rise in here, so when you pull it through, if you pull it through next to the cordia, it's a bit harder to cut off, but you don't notice the, the lump underneath it. So if we pull it up over that way. Itself up under there. Don't pull it too hard, or else you pull the um, bottom part out of alignment too. All right, then we trim that off. Now 
Et voilà. Job done. All right. Any questions? Hit me up right at the bottom. Otherwise, get a koto. Nami Hinui. Catch you all later.